I'm here at Red Hat Summit with Aaron Boyd, and I just talked to Steve Watt about what Red Hat's doing with multi-cluster. And I was wondering if you could give me some specific examples around how multi-cluster is employed in, in Red Hat's world. Sure, so multi-cluster for OpenShift is based on Kubernetes Federation. So the idea is creating a consistent control plane across all clusters, including hybrid cloud clusters. So in terms of storage, that means creating a way to expose those APIs regardless of the platform you're running on. And so, so what's an example where, like, let's say I have an deployment and I want to use like both Azure and AWS and maybe something in my own data center. What, what would be an example of how you would enable that? Sure. So depending on the type of application it is, the most simple use case that we're uh, executing on is having a consistent storage class across all of those clouds. So if you have an application that can provide self-replication, you can use the same storage class name as a developer, um, ignorant basically to the storage that's underneath it, um, but having different types of storage backing that. Um, in that way, an application that can provide replication just uses each cloud's performance characteristics for um, its support and storage. And so, so then you make it totally transparent and then the developer doesn't need to care whether the, the back end is actually AWS or Azure? Exactly. The idea is to automate a lot of that out from the developer so they can focus on their application where they want to spend their time. The other piece that allows is for administrators to administrate where they want, to create quotas, deploy the type of storage that they want, have different policies. What's an, what's an example scenario where you guys have, have demonstrated this like working in the wild? Um, well, last year at Summit, we had a live demo uh, where users within the audience were able to upload pictures. Um, they landed on a specific cloud, and then we removed one of the clouds. And in that case, we had storage actually stretched between three clouds. So then when one cloud went away and there was a disaster, uh, we had been replicating the data underneath on that stretch storage. It was fully accessible now just from the two clouds with no data loss. That's, that seems like an important scenario. It is. Whether it's pictures or, or you know, business data. Exactly, yep. So, and another thing we're enabling with uh, Federation, especially this year, is the use of object. Uh, my team has uh, contributed to the upstream Kubernetes, the idea of having an object bucket and an object bucket claim. So this creates a control plane for object that didn't exist before. We have file and block, and that's those are the two primary uh, things within Kubernetes APIs that we ex expose, but having object in there allows us to then use federation to move that from cluster to cluster. And is that is that a deployed scenario, or is that something that you guys are still internally working on? We have uh, the CRDs working, and we have now an S3 provisioner. We're working on a Rook provisioner, and we just acquired a new company called Nuba. We're working on a provisioner for them. But what it allows is, um, again, vendors to bring their own drivers, but use a consistent API on top. The consistent API on top is, you know, the crux for portability. If we don't have that, then we really can't federate apps long term. Makes sense. Yep. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Sure. Great. Right, thanks.